With all the rings installed, it is now time to go ahead and get ready to place in the pistons. And uh, as you see here, uh, we're getting our tub ready full of oil. Our oil that we're going to be using is a uh, Z-Rod uh, motor oil, and we're using a lot of uh, uh, assembly lube as well where needed. And of course, we're, just like you saw on the 349 build, we're going to dip each piston into the oil. It's going to be messy. Especially these pistons are a little bit bigger than the 349 was. And um, once they are lubed up, we're going to go ahead and set them in the block itself and making sure to um, uh, catch the um, bottom part here where it doesn't scratch or mar up the journals on the crank itself. So let me show you that piston, or that, I'm sorry, that. Um, rod journal is in its down position. Those things are tied on here because it doesn't use the same setup that we had on the 349. The 349 was studded, all right, and these are not studded. These are a little bit different. By the way, this is our little guide provided from the manufacturer for the seals. You see the arrow there, right? The arrow is indicating the front of the engine, okay, and that also indicates the wrist pin center line. And the top uh, compression ring, right, is going to go, or the gap on that top compression ring is going to go to one side, and then the gap for the second compression ring is going to the other uh, left side. So you got the right side for the gap on the top, the second gets the left side on the gap. Then you see on the right of that circle, there are two oil rings. So you got your, um, uh, your oil ring expander, your gap range. Again, we're dealing with a higher compression motor, so uh, there's not as much gap that on these as there would be elsewhere. So it's time for a final assembly here. And by final assembly, we mean we're gonna go ahead and set the uh, crank in place because we're confident that all of our clearances are in place. So what we're doing is we're setting our seals. Again, just like on the other 318, 349 build that we did, we're making sure that the seal on the back has the large tall end towards the front of the motor. That keeps the oil from going out this way. So that big tall ridge goes this way. And then we're matching that with the other seal on the cap itself. And we're gonna use a little bit a dab of RTV, um, in this case a little bit of right stuff, to make sure that it sets in place. So just two dabs of right stuff right there and right there. And that's just a little bit of additional insurance. Some people don't do that, and that's fine. Uh, we choose to do that because we have seen situations where caps are put in place and you still get that oil leak from the rear seal. This is a little additional incentive to help prevent that leaking uh, around the seal area itself. And again, this one has the seal on it as well. And of course, you can see evidence of that right here. No need to show you because you've seen this before on my 349 build. That journal is in its bottom down position, uh, respective for piston number one. All right, taking our oil, it's going to be messy here, so we're just letting that soak in those compression rings there. Making sure those are good and saturated. Again, we're trying not to be as messy here, um, but yeah, there's really no way to not do this cleanly. Want to make sure that all the gaps and the rings are compressed as needed here. that into place here.
look how much space is inside. 4.18 inches of stroke. Of course, it's in its bottom position. Yo, that's a good chunk of change right there. So we've had a chance to go ahead and run it through its cycle. If you remember our last build, the 349 build, we noticed a little bit of binding. There's none of that here. And you can now see it's in its top dead center position. And uh, yeah, just a little bit there. I mean, just, uh, we're gonna be using the, the proper recommended gaskets for this. So uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna look at. And we're gonna do this a few more times. And then we'll walk you through the process of uh, what's going on. I'll try to get the GoPro up in there to show you the next few as they're coming down and what we're looking for and how we're catching them, so on and so forth. And we're just snugging these up. We're not torquing them down. We're going to do that after we get them all set. We get a good spin on there, and we still have to check our uh, clearances. We ran into a little snag here, and uh, the bolts, uh, and that's part of the gig. You know, you, you're building something here, and you're test fit, and there's a lot of extreme tolerances, especially when it comes to. Uh, dealing with this longer stroke of a crank. The piston rod bolts were touching the uh, back sides of the cylinders. So yeah, there's gonna need to be some additional cutting. And of course, we knew this might happen, but we weren't sure what needed to be done. So what we're doing is we're still going through with setting the pistons and just taking out that bolt that's the possible problem spot, marking each cylinder where we need to grind down at. We're gonna uh, grind out just those portions uh, that there's the concern with, and then uh, we can get this back to full test to make sure we are good and golden.